All right, I'm going to get my shoes off. It may not be a beautiful day in the neighborhood, but the shoes got to come off because <laughs> I'm sitting down at the desk. Good evening, good people. Hi, Jason here with Green Country Agriforce. It's Wednesday, 8.30 p.m. somewhere, maybe here, maybe where you are. Oh, my feet are tired. I need to massage these puppies. Ah, I've been running around all day. It's time for another live stream. How are you guys doing? Oh, I have been running all over the place, uh, around here, not, not 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 literally all over the place, but all over this place, uh, getting stuff stuck in the ground. It's that time of year again. <laughs> I have managed to record a few things. I took some time out earlier today to uh, to edit a little video, which we will be entitling um, "Why I Still Don't Use Alfalfa Pellets in the Garden." Uh, and of course, it's it's in relationship to the uh, the, the 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 now apparently famous uh, "Don't use alfalfa pellets in the garden" video that I produced a couple of years ago. Yeah, so so fun times. It's it's just basically we're, we're going back and we're revisiting the uh, the place where I did all of that planting of fertilizer elements instead of going to the store to buy it. I'm so shoot, I may as well plant it and grow it right here at the at the boundary of the property. If I have it here at the border, it's the first thing that rabbits are going to stop at instead of coming in and hitting the garden. I've got all of this fertility right here that I can just cut back and use as fertilizer. And now, of course, I can use it as duck feed. Uh, we're contemplating getting rabbits here one of these days, so we'll, we'll turn that into rabbit feed too. So they go, okay, it's 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 a trap crop for the for the critters out here. It's a source of fertility. It's food for the rabbits. It's food for the ducks. Yeah, food for the worms. It's a mulch. It's a, 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 a compost starter. It's a, a soil amendment. It's it's all, all things that you need, and it just grows right there. It's perennial. It grows back every year. Great stuff. Uh, so so yeah, I I, I I don't regret at all uh, deciding to start growing my own fertilizer and including that as part of what I'm growing, because as it turns out, it's it's a it's a lot better harvest that you get whenever you you're, you're doing it this way. Um, I'm going out to the, the store and buying this stuff. Everything's right there. Everything's right there. Whenever, whenever you're walking by and you see that that your your, your daylilies are getting a little overgrown by the clover, you go, "Oh well, I need to I need to get the daylilies some more sunlight." So you grab up the sickle, you know, chop a little bit over there. And what do you do with that? I oh, either throw it over here at the base of the peach tree and I fertilize the peach tree, or I I, I save save it and then I go over and I. I feed it to the ducks, and of course the ducks make good eggs and manure and so on and so forth. So that's great. Yeah, and whenever we get bunnies, Kimber's saying bunny poop is really good for the soil. Bunny rabbits and earthworms both have similar um, gut bacteria, and whenever they, whenever their, their their poo finishes processing and comes out the other end, it is already ready to be used directly on the soil. You don't have to age it like other fertilizers. Which is kind of nice. So, good evening, Kimber. Good evening, Brian. Good evening, Sassafras Red, Grandma Zoo. Pick it and eat it. Great name. Um, who else is here? Caroline Food Forest. Uh, I shipped out your order um, on Monday. So, those will be here should or should be there by Friday. But they'll be going to Florida. Not, uh, not Georgia. Multiply in Florida, and then take the take the extras to Georgia. I mean, that's why that's kind of what I'm planning on doing here is multiplying everything here, and then whenever we 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 filled this place, busting out the seams, there is no more room in the end. Boom, we're 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 stuck. We 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 don't have any place where we can put all these plants. Um, that's that's whenever that's the I think the point whenever the opportunity to move to a larger place will suddenly present itself just miraculously because that's the way things work. So <laughs> at that point, we'll start moving things from, from here to there and expanding, um, presuming that what we're doing here is the right thing. Of course, that's the question. Is what we're doing here the right thing? Good evening, everybody. I guess we're we're about five minutes in. We've got 13 people. That's that's, that's a fairly, fairly decent number to, to get started. I'd like to thank everybody for watching, obviously. Um, and the reason I entitled this video or this particular 
uh, live session. Thank you for watching. It's because this is the way you typically you, you, you finish a video and you sign off and go, bye. Thanks for watching. We'll, 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 I'll, I'll see you next time. Of course, it might not be I'll see you next time. You never know. Things happen, right? The, the world is a crazy place. I was looking at our analytics, and I know people hate it whenever YouTubers talk about analytics. So instead of talking about the analytics, you can watch me peel an orange. No, <laughs> I was looking at my channel analytics, and, 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 and something interesting happened over the past few days that I decided to share with you. I don't know whether it's a celebration, sort of sharing with you sort of thing, or if it's a um, cause for alarm. It's one of the two. I don't know why. But as most of you probably know, my most popular video for just the longest time has been one that I did for the first Shed Wars competition. Um, and it was in, it was it was how to make potassium nitrate from scratch. And, and, and there, there, there are issues with the, the titling of that because I wasn't really showing the whole process there. I was really just showing how to make really well nitrified earth from materials anybody who lives in the city has access to, to put it delicately. Um, I didn't really expect the video to, to, to do anywhere near as well as it did, but that's the thing that's gotten the most views and is responsible for about 50% of all the the subscribers that the channel has had for, for, for pretty much the life of the, of, of the channel. Yes, I'm eating my dinner. It's, it's an orange. It's this is a little mandarin orange. They're so delicious. And I've been contemplating how to go about getting one to grow here in 7A, but all right. For the longest time, this one video, how to make potassium nitrate from scratch. It's a fertilizer video, but this is the thing that has all the, half the subscribers, half the views. Like of, of, of over the million views, I've actually passed a million views, yay. But so over 600,000 of them are that one video, just that one video. And, and a lot of them don't stay for the rest of the gardening stuff. They were just interested in that one thing, right? But this past week, I noticed that that particular video went from number one, which is typically always at number one, number one, number one, number one, very rarely ever to number two. But it went to number two, and then it went to number three. And at number two was a video I had just made. And at number one was this this, this older video. Do not use um, alfalfa pellets in your garden. Subtitle, do this instead. And do this instead is, of course, take a strip on the perimeter of your garden and dedicate that to planting your alfalfa and your clover and your and, and, and your other your other stuff like that. That way you, you make your own supply and you're not dependent upon the store. At that time, it was like $13.50 or so for a 50-pound bag. I mean, it wasn't expensive to get this at the, at the, at the Home and Garden Center. Uh, Little, little, little pellets. And I got a bag and I, I didn't get them to, to use as, as soil them. I got them because they were cheap and I thought maybe I could feed them to the ducks. And um, lo and behold, the ducks didn't like them. <laughs> so I got stuck with them and now I've got these alfalfa pellets that are turning white <laughs> because I, I don't know what to do. I was like, do I? I mean, I could actually use them as a soil amendment, but I just said don't. So I'm just I'm sitting here with a, a barrel of them just, just, just bleaching themselves. Hmm. So not here, here I need to go find that number one video and watch. Yeah, some of you have never watched that one. It's like half of everybody who comes here is here looking for this one thing, and then they realize, oh wait, this guy's not gonna is not gonna show us how to make how to make gunpowder and blow stuff up. He's gonna show us how to make fertilizer and make plants grow. Well, this is boring. I'm out of here. <laughs> and so they take off. But now this video is now moved down in, in, in priority. It's not getting the views that it once was, but at the same time, overall views haven't gone down. So this is why I'm kind of hopeful. Maybe it means that now it's going to be more of the serious gardening, homesteading, agroforestry, forest garden content. You know, the, the cool stuff that I do on a regular basis is what's going to be getting the views. In which case, great. That means that going forward, we'll probably get more views because more people are going to be watching the stuff that I'm, I'm doing on a regular basis. I hope that's what it means. But then again, it might mean that, hey, you know what? Um, at this particular point, you've got about uh, maybe 17,000 subscribers. Yeah, yeah we're going to go ahead and catch you out. That's all you're ever going to have. And then the channel just dwindles away to nothing. And, pff, there it goes. I don't know. 
I don't know what's going to wind up happening, but I'm just going to go ahead and, and proceed forward as if um, as if the transition is is that, that the algorithm now realizes that this is a gardening channel. It's showing content to people who are interested in gardening, and maybe that's what's going to happen, and and that's going to be the the viewership going forward. And if so, then goody, because that's kind of what I wanted in the first place. So there we go. Hmm. Yeah, I would have more views with doom and gloom titles. This is true. Do you think I should do the old bait and switch, throw the doom and gloom title, and then present the the, the, the obvious and plain solution that makes the doom and gloom kind of pointless and obsolete? Would people get upset? Hmm. Gardening can be just as dangerous. Gardening is subversive, right? It's saying, look, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can take care of certain things for myself. The things I can take take care of for myself is, is a place where I have independence. Independence is uh, is is a dangerous thing. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Powers that shouldn't be don't want us to understand physics and chemistry one on one. They want us to believe it's too complicated for us to understand. Well. Uh, the old Prussian indoctrination system. You guys, if 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 if, if, if you don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a couple of reveals. I'm gonna talk about the hat and and, and why I always wear this funny hat. Um, and, and, and also also reveal some so, so, some of my childhood. I was I was raised by a school teacher, uh, not an ordinary school teacher, but one with one with a master's degree that was doing experimentation and some fun other stuff in the educational system. Um, but <laughs> Where was I? Um, I was educated a little bit differently than my than my classmates. We'll put it that way, because the purpose of the Prussian indoctrination system is, of course, not to produce men of letters. It's to produce people who are going to fill the jobs in industry. This was the idea when it was pitched way back. I can't remember how long ago. Um, people have Google. You can look it up. <laughs> But whenever this was this was introduced to 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 to, to America, uh, it was it was tried out over in Germany. Makes nice, well programmed workers. Everybody is obedient. Cogs in the system. Everything's great. And of course, this 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 really really feeds well into in, in, into socialist ideology because it, it becomes this this we thing. This this massive conglomerate instead of individual striving for for individual excellence and achievement. Right. Um, you get all of that stuff going on. So I, I, I was exposed to, to the reality of that very early on. I knew what, what, what the purpose of it was. It's like this, this is to, to program workers. It's not to produce ac people with, with, with academic acumen, not to produce thinkers. It's to produce people that are told what to think. And, and this starts from a very young age, and it goes on and on and on. And I didn't know some things at first. Um, something I, I only dawned on me recently is that those multiple choice tests they started giving us. Instead of giving you an essay, a test with an essay question, you know, the kids would hate that. Oh, no, don't give me the essay question. I actually have to think about the answer. But here's the thing. You have to think about the answer. On the multiple choice question, multiple choice test, one of the answers is going to be correct, right? You have a, you have a one in four chance of getting it right just simply by sheer accident. So um, that sort of has a tendency to, 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 to lead away from critical thought and and, and and really full comprehension and depth of knowledge. If you, if you can guess which one of these four answers it is based upon a general rough idea of what the subject matter is, you, you have a very good chance of, of passing the test. But there is something else that you learn whenever you're be, being given these multiple choice tests. And that is, I'm going to present you with a bunch of choices. One of the choices is going to be correct, but you must make one, one of these choices that I'm presenting to you. So you're you're not even taught to think that there might be any choices other than what's being presented to you by whoever's doing the presenting, whoever's doing the, that that presenting. That's the person with real power. That's who's running the show. That's not even who's running for office. Yeah. Okay. But your your average student was not being encouraged to 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 to, to think critically. Whenever I was a student in the 1970s and 1980s, uh, they're certainly not being 
African encourage to think critically now. And of course, yeah, you really have to have a, a, a passion for the sciences, for physics, to want to know how the world works, um, to, 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 to really go out and, and, and get educated. And of course, that was the way I was. I just, I was curious about everything. So I, I would go and find out. <laughs> so I don't know, but I want to find out. So I'll go find out. And then whenever my curiosity is satisfied about one thing, at least to a point, I'll go and find out something else. And then, and then as, as this as this goes on, you notice that there are different fields that overlap, that if you focused on just one field of study, you'd miss so much other things where they overlap. But you look at different fields of study and you correlate them, go, oh, wait a minute, this and this and this and this and this, these are all interconnected. And they're interconnected in the really cool way is that if we were to sit here and manipulate the way the way interactions occur in this little fractal system, constantly absorbing and, and, and harvesting energy as we get it coming in from the sun, coming in from nature, coming up from the ground, coming in from everywhere, massive amounts of energy that are that, that are passing through ecosystems constantly, that mostly just gets turned over. Nothing happens with it. It, it just cycles. And that's all that happens. But there's an awful lot of life that can be enhanced, improved, and and and, and fostered with a little guidance of ecosystems. Anyway. Nikki's saying the classical education taught, taught how to think critically, not what to think. Yeah. And so it's important to go back to your sources, to the, the fountains, as it were. Uh, and, you know, get, get your source materials. Uh, you can find a lot of things online these days, and kind of the, the nice thing about the modern age. But uh, having hard copy books is, is very, very handy. I've got a, a, a useful one on order that will not be here until Sunday, so I can't show it to you and give you the review until next Wednesday. But teaser, I, I've ordered up a copy of uh, David the Goods Grow or Die, and I'll, I'll be getting that on Sunday. So I'll be reading that, and I'll have a review for you come Wednesday. But of course, if you're already familiar with, with, with David, his style of writing and sense of humor, uh, you, 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 you can guess it's gonna it's gonna be an, a, a, an interesting read, uh, and maybe even informative. We'll see, we'll see. Hmm. Hmm. There are I, the the last one I picked up was um, free plants for everyone which is just a, a, a great basic primer. If you have absolutely no idea whatsoever what you're doing, you can read this book and you can get started duplicating your own plants and and, and, and then saving tons of money really on, 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 on um, propagation. Brain part. Ah. <laughs> oh, Oh, world's 7,000 7, years old, huh? Eh. I don't know. I'm only 52. You haven't seen the rest of them. <laughs> but it really is. Uh, yeah, David's got a new book out called Minimalist Gardener. I have to get that one next. I have to get that one next. I, I, I'm always playing. I'm always, I'm always play, playing catch up. Compost your enemies. There you go. Now, that one just sounds subversive, doesn't it? <laughs> of course, we we think he means euphemistically. Your your enemy is like your weeds, you know. And then whenever you've got you know the, the pests that come into your garden, you have to dispose of the pests too. Rats, you know, you you can compost those too. I I I I've, I've, I've composted a rat before. It works. <laughs> anyway, Vicky is saying found from formal school is going to be more, more propaganda than education. Well, yeah, there's it, it. Well, it is a form of education. They're educating you to 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 listen to the people who say that they're in the they're the authority. We're the people in charge. You must listen to us. You must do what we tell you. At the same time, they tell you, but you're the citizen and you're in charge. And and and. It, uh, would you make up your minds which one of us is the servant, which one's the master? Because it's kind of confusing to us. You've just told us that uh, that we're the masters, but then you then you 
<laughs> what is this? Um, <laughs> you have to bang your head off the wall to relieve and recess, Molly Andrews, and everything resets. What is this? Twisted sushi. What a name. What a name. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't I don't have the I don't have the I don't have the uh, the, the hoodie or the shirt. I could probably I could probably stand to pick up another shirt or two. So anyway, yeah, future of the, of, of the channel is in doubt. We do not know what's going to happen in the future. Either one, we're going to be uh, uh, recognized by the algorithm as, as, as a pred predominantly gardening and homesteading and maybe preparedness, general preparedness type channel. I know we're not really hardcore into you must prep because most people you know, are doom and gloom. But it's any reason to, 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 to feel any... Any sense of trepidation? I mean, I've been planning a garden and <laughs> being prepared to do without the supermarket for a while now. So um, if it disappears, then it disappears. I've got a manual saw to cut my wood, a wood stove and a well and manual pump and spare seals for it. The ability to make more seals. Um, yeah, gardening is more prepping than prepping, I guess. But you know, a, a lot of this is just the way you had to, to to live. My grandmother grew up; she was born in a in a sod house on the prairie in Kansas, just before Oklahoma became a state. And that's you know, two generations ago. So two generations ago, people were pioneering on this land here. Two generations. And now we have cities. <laughs> we got cities and highways and and and, and uh, electric lights, and cable cars, subways and airplanes, internet, simultaneous communication all across across the globe, translation into different languages, and people that hate other people that have no idea what those other people are like at all they just they hate the idea they've got an idea and they hate the idea crazy world we live in mm. oh here we go we have a gardening question thank you thank you very much Billy. jay do you think biochar the size of coffee grinds is good enough i do believe so um, you don't have to have huge chunks for your biochar to be effective. Coffee ground size is, 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 is fine. That stuff's not going to decompose for a long, long, long time, even if it is broken up into smaller pieces. And it may not last as long before it gets broken into dust if it's in smaller particle size to begin with. But the biochar is going to stay in the soil, even at coffee ground size. Even a grain of sand size, it'll stay in there for hundreds of years. So every bit that you get in there, it's just moving the soil closer and closer uh, away from, or closer and closer to old growth and away from Pioneer. So pump it in, get it in there, charge it first, and then get it in there. And it, it'll, it'll, it'll push you into, into the next, the next type of forest quickly, quickly. Let me see. Hmm. I think we have advanced too fast. Hmm. There's a lot of there's there, there's a lot of wisdom that has to come along with with with, with discovery and 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 a lot of our successes have led us to to to, to life of ease. It's it's been too easy for us. We don't have the, the the struggles to overcome. If we don't have the struggles to overcome, then we, we 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 don't test ourselves. We don't test ourselves. We don't grow, right? So we have 
we have that and we have irresponsibility being taught from very early age it, it does it comes straight down from the top because we have you know starting out governmental level we're in charge who we're going to tell you what to do parents go okay so we we're, we're following the the the, the, the uh the model that we're being given government is presenting itself as parental so we're following the parent model that we are being given and so we're going to tell children what to do to detail and not allow them responsibility because if we allow them responsibility then they'll have independence if they have independence they have freedom if they have freedom they don't need us right so perpetually keeping people in positions of irresponsibility so they're always children they never grow up well, now we've got 70 80 year old adult children holding political office this is a problem it's a big problem hopefully there's something that can be done about it somewhere around the end of the year maybe polling places and such you never know but i wouldn't count on that for the total solution right because the solution really has to come from the individual acting, using using their own imagination, and 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 finding solutions and 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 doing so in lawful manner. Hmm. We could say much of my prepping is acquiring more kinds and varieties of seeds and knowledge of how to grow and use them. Absolutely. Um, I was, okay. let me show you these. This is a pair of boots. Got a hole right here. They're, they're actually remarkably well sealed down here at the bottom. This is an older pair of boots. They didn't leak until they developed the hole in the leather there, right? But absent of a, 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 a an effective cobbler that can repair those, Having a blowout on a pair of boots like that means I need a new pair of boots. And I'm probably going to go through a pair of boots like that every two or three years, more than likely. Realistically speaking, if I was doing the prepper thing, I would go, okay, if I know I can't get the boots from the grocery store, you should be wondering where the boots come from. Hang on. Mm. All right. And I'm going to have to stop power boots. And uh, I'm going to live for another 40 years. Three. Mm. I need 10 more pairs of boots. All right, so it's probably not enough boots. <laughs> if you got them stacked to the rafters, boots stacked into the rafters. Um, there are some things that that if you can't get them, you're not going to have them. You know, things like seals for your for for your for your water pump. Um, some spare parts might be a good idea to have, but for a lot of things. I, I think the best prep you can possibly have is the ability to produce more. So if I have the ability to produce more food, that's that's better than having beans stacked to the rafters. You still want to have enough to get through the winter, clearly. That's just being prudent. And maybe a little extra so you have something to to help out other people that are that that that, that, that are in, in, in dire straits, that's always nice to have too. You know, the entire idea of moving to a position of abundance is eventually you have so much that you don't know what in the world you're going to do with it. You have to get rid of it. You either sell it or give it away, or it goes to waste, and you don't want to waste anything. I mean, this is an, a move towards greater efficiency in systems, not more more wastefulness. So, uh, yeah, I have an overabundance right now in in, in cannas. Uh, they're not shippable. I've I've looked over them. It's like, eh, these are ones that I put them in the ground here. They're gonna grow, but if I put them in a bag and I ship them somewhere. I'm not sure that they're going to make the trip and grow when they get somewhere. And that's why I'm not shipping. We sold out of the ones that I was, I was comfortable shipping um, within the first 24 hours that I listed them for sale. So yay, <laughs> these roots, they're, each rhizome that I'm selling, is, they're over a pound each. So I, I, I had it, one, one box was for, for like three orders. It was nine roots all together that cost me close to $20 in shipping to, to ship out these nine roots because they think they, they they weighed about eight and a half pounds 
altogether. Craziness. But hey, we're making that move from, you know, I, we don't know what kind of channel this is to definitely gardening, homesteading type channel. And of course, nursery business. Check the links down below for, for nursery stock and all that. So hopefully it takes. Um, Hugo Homestead popping in to say hello. Hello, hello. Um, all right. Grandma is asking about biochar and fun stuff like that. Um, I'll tell you what I did that I had I had some pretty good success with. Um, I went through, cut my alfalfa and clover and the other things that are there, just like I was making uh, doing before to make weed tea. So I well, when weed tea, I cut down anything, and particularly like old pokeweed, whenever it starts getting too red, you know, you don't want to put it in the salad anymore, you don't want to feed it to anything, but you can take it and you can chop it up and you can throw it in the in, in, into the compost. It's still high in protein, that protein breaks down and becomes nitrogen so protein converts to nitrogen um you do that along along with all your all, all of your other amendments you could take that and instead of doing a liquid a liquid compost, you can still do liquid compost but you can do a, a hot compost with your charcoal mixed in so right after you've got your char done you've quenched it you mix that in with your with your uh, your high nitrogen uh, compost that you want want to go, you let it go through the heat phase. And whenever it gets done with heat, you have to make sure it's done with heat. Then come back it come back and hit it with uh with some 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 lactobacillus culture and a little bit of yeast if you want to throw a little bit of yeast in there afterwards. And then let it uh let it sit for another day or two with a little bit of a little bit of sugar water and you know, sugar water spray it, toss it and let it sit for another day or two and, and then you're ready to go. And that's about the best charge that I've been able to find for it. Um, but anything that you can do that will saturate all those little tiny uh, pockets in, in the charcoal with uh, with moisture and biological activity um, is, is, is what you want to do. Because if, 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 if it's not already occupied with something, it will absorb. And it will absorb a lot. <laughs> so uh, just compost with the charcoal in it. And then whenever the compost is done with the charcoal in it, 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 it will be charged and ready to go. So you have compost and charcoal all at the same time. And then you mix that in. Just calm down, sit back, and wait for your daily rations of crickets. The government has only our best interest in mind. That's right. That's right. Whenever they bring the cattle car alongside and wave for you to step up, you just make sure you hand their children up first because you want them to be first in line. That's right. <laughs> oh, my. Hi, how y'all doing? Um. Let me see here. Let's catch that. Let's see. Ah, Billy's telling us about his process. All right. Use a five-gallon pail and aerated compost. Molasses, unsulfured. Uh, don't have enough degrees to do a dry mix of molasses and flour. Um, so if you were doing a, an anaerobic uh, wet compost before, before you use that to, to inoculate, you should either aerate, which is good, to change, change it to an aerobic, aerobic uh, uh, bacteria composition or you can solarize as well and then area solarizing will kill off all of the little anaerobes before you do an inoculation but even if even if you were to take that that fetid swamp water and and soak your biochar in that and then go ahead and take that and mix it right into the soil you would still be all right because over time Whenever that, the, whenever you're exposed to oxygen, the anaerobes will die, and they will be replaced by aerobic bacteria. And all of that exchange going on, you're gonna have a little minor dip in fertility for a season. Whenever that shift happens, and then from there on out, you've got the, 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 
minerals and materials that were in the bodies of the anaerobes that are still left behind that are that are future fertility that are they're now already in the in the charcoal so either way you charged it so one, one of them is just charged then it takes a little conversion period and the other one's charged but just say for example you did not have an aerator you can you, you can still pull, pull it off with the with 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 the jdam stuff you know fermented plant juice we just have a, a, a little minor hiccup for eh, maybe a half a season. Mm. But all the soluble minerals will still be there. So there's that. Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> hey, that that's 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 really taking the uh, the advice to uh to, to, to use it up, wear it up, uh, wheeze it up, uh, fix it up, make it do, wear it out. Ah, how'd it go? Come on. You guys know this one. Uh, use it up, wear it up, make it do it, do it out. Hmm. Oh, that mandarin orange is so nice. Brian changes the boot every seven years. Oh, my goodness. I wear them out. I really do. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, I was actually talking with Mary. These these are the new ones. Mary ordered these up for me on, on the, uh, on on the evil platform that everything is ordered on these days. They have they have a safety toe, but the ones I like to wear have a, a a steel shank across here because whenever you're stepping on the back of the fork or a shovel to drive it through clay and sand and rocks and gravel and stuff like that, it it, it goes right there on the bridge of your foot and. Of course, unless you're just positioning your heel there, but it, it, it makes more sense to put it there on the bridge of the foot, and then having the steel shank to push against keeps it from 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 hurting your your footsies. But these, they just I don't feel like I'm getting proper support for my arches. <laughs> so I guess before you go and buy a lifetime supply of boots to stock your, your your prepper pantry with, make sure that they're they're the ones that you're going to be comfortable wearing for the rest of your life. Hmm. Sassgrass says groundhog hide to do tell makes good boot leather or moccasins. <gasps> I, I would have to try. Have livestock, and you will have more boots. There you go. All right, I, I, I we're we're on a third of an acre here, so I'm going to have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to work out a deal. That I, 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 I know some people not too far away from here, that 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 to have that have the land and raise the hogs. So I'll just you know, go ahead and buy the hog from them, and um, pay them for the feed. So they'll board my animal for me, and then when he's weighing out about two fifty. Or so, I'll come on down. I'll tell them to 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 to, to, to start them for, for for a couple of days. Come down and uh, take care of the uh, the processing, and then we'll have leather that I can that I can tan as well. We'll go ahead and turn those into boots, <laughs> possibly. Um, it's been a long time since I've tanned a hide. I, I haven't done that since I was a kid. With that. That hog back leather is pretty tough. Hog hide. <laughs> yeah, working a shovel with moccasins would be difficult. <laughs> Made in motor motorcycle tire shoes. You know, they say that, that, that right now there's probably more clothing and stuff like that out there than any of us would ever wear if, if 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 the world came to an end as we know it the clothing that's out there in the warehouses and the and the and the, the stores and everything uh just sitting around is more than we will wear in our lifetimes that's almost mind boggling but it's we have we have just a huge um a huge surplus that we've built up some stuff is just he uh, I, 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 I became interested in growing my own spices a while ago. I mean, a while ago. Uh, when I got out of the Navy, I got, I got into some, some restaurant jobs cooking. You know, I always loved doing it. And lo and behold, they'll pay you to do it. It was wonderful. Uh, 
but I noticed that um, whenever I went home, and I was cooking at home with the spices that you can get from the grocery store typically, a lot of those spices, they're old. They don't have quite the quite the potency that they should. Not quite what they would be if they were fresh. And, uh, you know, I kind of like like fresh spices, you know, the, 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 the good stuff, the potent stuff where you don't have to throw in handfuls to get the desired effect. So I, I got into growing my own spices as sages and rosemary and cayenne pepper. Oh, we've got some wonderful cayennes. One, one pepper will season your chili. That's great. Mm. And of course, garlic, onions, bland food is, is, is no fun. Nobody likes bland food. You can you can you can take just the most ordinary things, and with with some some good seasonings, make them taste extraordinary. And of course, growing seasonings is not something that you necessarily would think about for for, for preparation. But imagine it on the shelves right now. There is going to be a, a, a container that says black pepper on it. It has ground black peppers, commodity ground black pepper. You can buy them. Disposable containers with the salt, sometimes in a two pack. You open this up and you sprinkle it out, and it's got the black pepper in there. And you can take a pinch and put a hair right there under your tongue or behind your your lip, and sort of hold it there for a moment, and let that let that the your your, your saliva work it and get the the puckering out of there, and, and and see how see how spicy it really is. And if, if it's good, proper black pepper, I mean, it, it, the smell should hit you as soon as you, you, you open up the containers like, oh, wow, that's black pepper. You can smell it coming from a mile away because it's nice and fresh. But depending upon how long the thing's been sitting up there on the shelves, it could have been harvested and then shipped in a container to, to a warehouse, held in the warehouse, sold to, 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 another, to another enterprise over here that takes it and sub, sub wholesales it. And they sell it off to ultimately the, the spice company that packages it. But they don't package it right away either because they're buying in bulk. And they're like, well, you know, we need 400 tons of pepper. We need you know, 300 of uh, paprika. We, we need, is that right? 950 tons of garlic? Granulated flakes, powder. That's of each? Oh, okay. Americans eat a lot of garlic. Okay. And, and they get this stuff in, but they only package and sell what the consumer market is absorbing at the moment. Meanwhile, what they're sending out is just enough to keep the warehouses stocked up. But those warehouses are stocked up sitting here. How long has the spice been made? Or how long has it been since it was picked fresh before it finally got to you in, the, in your kitchen? And so depending upon where you get your spices, they're, they're not necessarily fresh. So I'm going to grow my own spices. That, that seems like a no-brainer. And then whatever meat I happen to find, whatever vegetables I happen to find, I can I can make them taste good. Hmm. Yeah, I... I, I Yeah, if you needed to be able to draw and shape copper wire in order to 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 to, to garden the human race would have been extinct a long time ago. <laughs> However, having well balanced soil electrolytes is probably a good idea because well balanced soil electrolytes can be taken up by the plants whenever they uh, use osmosis to absorb water. So. There, there should be conductive materials in the plants already, right? Yep, you're right. They're already antennas. They are. There you go. Commercial for Red Wing Boots, best quality. Minnesota company. Now back to program. There you go. Made in the USA. Got to keep those guys up there in the northern prairie busy. Otherwise, they get up to crazy stuff. What's the snow up to, Brian? A foot right now? <laughs> you guys have not had, are not out of winter yet. Oh my gosh, that's terrifying. Mm. Is 
That's enough to get to the next harvest, not just the next spring. Well, some stuff keeps better than others. Yeah. Um, the Jerusalem artichokes. Oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> if, if it turns out that I can eat them, great. If it, turns, if it turns out that I can't, then I've got rabbit food. Uh, but these things grow really well. Really, really well. It's almost impossible to get them all out of the soil, too. I went through uh, at least one spot where I had them planted with the fork and just turned through the soil again. And I found another four uh, little tubers in there. So there was a spot over there on the on the north property that had a little patch that yeah, they came up and they didn't do great. Um, they were still there. There's still some in there. And I'm, I'm sure I've got more in the front yard that I missed. But, eh, well, um, I've got maybe, what, 20 pounds of them to, to, to spread around now. <laughs> we'll have some for sale next year. Um, I, I think even if I'm not going to necessarily do a lot with them, at least not until we have our own rabbitry going, uh, I still want to have them available to, to put up for sale. Oh, speaking of things up for sale, you may notice, um, where did I put it? I don't know where anything is. You may notice that uh, that on the on the, the Shopify, the, the, the stuff that's linked to the YouTube account, on the Shopify account, we have, ooh, ooh, Mary got us some gardening tools. I'll have to show you this stuff here in a second. Um, we, we've, we've changed the, the Big Horse Spotted Corn offer for from one pack of, of 100 seeds, 16 gram 100 seeds, uh, for $5. I think I had it like $5.25 on Shopify. It was $4.99 from, from the, the main website. But we now have it 400 seeds for, I think it's $15. And that's like $5 for shipping. So it's like 20 bucks, 400 seeds delivered. That's enough to maintain the genome. You can you can do your entire land race with that. Um, pretty good deal, I think. Anyway, so we have that now. Okay. <laughs> Somebody is late. Late. That's right. What happens when you're late? Oh, you have to rewind and watch it all over from the beginning? Basically, so you won't have to rewind and watch all the way from the beginning. We're talking about um, how, how, how the channel has recently kind of switched from uh, that one video that was just doing really well and was responsible for about half the views and about half the subscribers, and then they ignored everything else. Well, now that one's kind of lowered in priority, and most of the regular content, which is gardening content and, and, and agroforestry, food forest and, and forest garden stuff and prepping stuff and homesteading stuff, uh, that's getting all the views now. So it's either it's either going forward, since that's most of what the content that I create is, it'll be getting more views, and that's great news, yay. Or it's the one thing everybody was really interested in is no longer being promoted by the algorithm. And that's all the subscribers you're ever going to get. Tough luck, kid. Try something else for a living. Uh, either way, we now have an uh, open nursery and we have uh, seeds and trees and other fun stuff for sale. So it's not like counting on Pat Revenue alone. Anyway. Um, Was, okay, another, another biochar question. Charge a few weeks. It takes a while for for all the 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 the, the water to, to fully integrate into that charcoal. So at least a week, probably two. But if you're composting with the charcoal in the compost while you're composting, by the time it's done, it's all charged. So there you go. So um, I think the quickest you could probably get a, a light green material compost heap to go is about 19 days or so. So, yeah, about three weeks. Which is, yeah, two weeks is probably enough to soak it. 
and three weeks is enough to compost. Um, we do the compost. You got you got it all taken care of. Absolutely delicious little mandarin oranges. I, I was talking about um, trying to figure out a way to grow them here and, and, and make a microclimate. And, and the idea that I was thinking was uh, kind of a crescent-shaped swale that has a, a high back, so it's got to be like this, right? Kind of like kind of you know, look, your, your your little high shoulder. Uh, I am Count Dracula collar thing. It's a high back, right? Crescent coming around. East and west are going to be, be going to be the lower limbs, and then north would be the the high back. This acts as a thermal barrier or a thermal mass, and also a windbreak from east wind, west wind, north wind. It allows the sun to come in from the south, which is great. And then at the base of that, you need a deep uh, pond, and, and it has to be fairly has have, has to have a fairly large amount of water in it, but it needs to be particularly deep so that it never fully freezes over. So this body of water here never fully gets all of it to freezing, which means that you've got another thermal bank here in front and then there behind. And in between those two, with the windbreak, we might be able to get away with growing maybe a Satsuma mandarin or something like that here in 7A, maybe. I just got to figure out how in the heck I can fit it in here. <laughs> I don't know if I can fit it in here. I don't know if I can get it into, into this property. Um, there are a lot of things. There are a lot of things that that, that, that that we can fit into this space, but but some stuff it might need a little bit more, uh, a little bit more of a footprint to, 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 to work out. But that's part of the reason why I like to just sit and think about, oh, what would, what could we do? Yeah, dream about it, talk about it, bounce the idea off of, off of a few people's heads, and then yeah, come up with something a little bit more realistic that's within capabilities. Ooh, using some bones, gumballs to make biochar in cans. There you go. Yeah, after they turn brown, the um, the the Styriacus lupid amber skeeds have been dispersed. I need to get a hold of some of those. I've been thinking about this. I, I don't have I don't have a sweet gum tree for sale. We have one back here in the yard. Produces seeds every year. Um, but I don't often do anything at all with them, and I really should. I, I, I could, I could, I could definitely start a couple of trees. Problem I have with this one is it's it's positioned right next to a power line, so it's not in a very convenient location. And the plan for it is um, here in probably two months. We bring down the carport. And then the next big major construction project, well, we might slip something else in between then and now, or then and the garage. But the next big thing after that will be getting the garage down. Once the garage is down, uh, we'll take a day and have the power company come out and drop that line, and we'll take out that particular tree. Hopefully, whenever they come out to take down that line, they can look at take a look at the sycamore that's right over there on the neighbor's property that's leaning over and threatening to drop half of the tree down and rip out all of the power lines going to this area. And they might be encouraged to maybe stress upon the property owner the importance of taking care of that before the inevitable incident occurs. Hopefully that will happen, and then we won't have to worry about the sycamore tree falling on our on our garage area anymore, and I can build something a little bit more permanent there where the garage used to be because it's a perfectly serviceable concrete path. It's just the garage is eh, um, not that great. <laughs> the The roof is old; it's ancient. It leaks the uh, the cinder block walls are the mortar's kind of iffy. I could probably knock it out with my hands. It's got gaps in it. We've already turned off the power to it. We've ripped out the, out the out the power, so it's it's ready to, to 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 demolish. It's just we have to get the cash together to to pay the crew to do the work because it's a little bit much for for one uh, one garden gnome to accomplish with hand tools <laughs> in an afternoon by himself. Um, 
<laughs> Tony and buy steak. What makes me think I'm gonna go purchase lab meat, right? Jeez, that stuff is expensive expensive. Hmm. These are banana chips. Yes, I'm just gonna sit here and snack in front of you. Just deal with it. If you're lucky I don't start cracking pecans. I can, you know. I have them right here. <laughs> hmm. This came first. Drugs, the loss of jobs. Uh usually it's the loss of jobs. I mean, there's always got people doing going to be people doing drugs, but people turning to drugs for something to do uh, happens whenever they don't have any other occupation, usually. Um, and then, of course, there's 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 the um, the, the PTSD angle, the the traumatic the traumatic life experience angle. You know, going through an area in economic depression is a traumatic life experience. It's not exactly, but it is analogous to soldiers in combat zones. You know, they take people, they, they, they train them on how to function as soldiers, but they don't teach them how to deal with the, the mental repercussions of what doing a soldier's job is and what it does to you. So they get back into the world and they have pain, both physical and mental, and they look for some way to solve it. The thing that they get over the counter very quickly and very easily is an analog for for um, for opium, an opioid. And if, whenever they can't get that prescribed to them anymore, well, lo and behold, you can always go buy opium or heroin or morphine or codeine or you know, other things like that. And so you wind up with an epidemic. Um, but yeah, I mean... The, the drugs are going to be there regardless, but whether or not they're abused by the population or not depends a lot upon upon the uh, the, the mental stresses that the population is under. So you see that the you see the the abuse rate rising is because the mental stress is rising. Do you believe biochar has all this miles of surface area for microbes? Yes, yes, I do. I do, I do, I really, really do. I see what it looks like under the microscope. It's awesome. It's just all these little tiny partitions, and every partition is just walls and walls and walls surrounding this little area, all surface area for, for microbes. And then there's another one right here, all surface area for more microbes. And so, yeah, it, it, lots and lots of surface area. Hedgehog's Homestead says, hi, Green Country. Hi, Hedgehog's Homestead. Hedgehog or the porcupine is the symbol for the Libertarian Party. I want to have a great big old, uh, it's, it's, it's also a symbol for anarchists as well. But I want to have a great big old porcupine lawn statue. Just sitting there going, <laughs> chirp, chirp, hi. I'm friendly, but don't pet me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a friendly herbivore. Just don't pet me. Oh. oh, yeah. Yep, yep. It happens. Because there's people who live back in the hills that uh, that, that, that have issues, too. Just because you live back in the hills doesn't necessarily mean everything's all right upstairs. Sometimes people go back in the hills because things aren't all right upstairs. And uh, they figure it's better for them and everybody else if they just stay away from everyone. But that means whatever problems they got, they don't get treated, right? So, and then once again, mental stress and, and, and drug abuse go hand in hand. I don't know if I can get trouble for talking about this. Well, okay, so this is anecdotal and ethnobotanical information. All right. we'll, we'll, we'll put it in the area of, of anthropological interest and in, 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 in science in that particular area. So part of the fun stuff that I've been doing for, for years and years and years is is, is looking into to, to, to different uh, belief systems, tribes, uh, various religions, Practices and a lot of them do include ethnobotanical practices. They're using chemicals, right? 
and the way they're used, how they're used, um, whether, whether this is, is, is sometimes they're just, we're just, they're just using neurological programming and stress, uh, keeping a person sitting upright at attention, focused on something while a particular tone is, is, is carried out with, with regular intervals, drums, candles, uh, bells, lights, rituals to get the mind focused and change the mental state. Right. That's, 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 that's the concept. Other people go out and endure great mental, mental and physical stress to get into a, a different mental state. That's what, what happens during the, the Lakota Sundance. It's, it's a brutal physical endurance uh, event that those stresses will potentially cause you to, to, to have experiences, an altered mental, mental state, altered consciousness. Um, There was a, a, I'm scratching my belly. Leave me alone. <laughs> there is a, 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 an herb and, and, and uh, Sassafras knows about this. And I talked about it before called Kalea Zacata Chichi or the Aztec dream herb. And it grows down there in Oaxaca, uh, Mexico, down the, 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 the oh, Oaxaca, 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 like Oaxaca, Oaxaca, Mexico, O-A-X-A-C-A. I think is how you pronounce it. Anyway, there might be an H in there. Southern in New Mexico. It's a little flowering plant, pretty little thing. But whenever, whenever it's 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 before it goes to seed, if it's harvested, you can take the thing and brew a tea out of it. And then the way they, they, they do it was they brew a tea and then they, they make a cigarette out of the leaves and they smoke some of the leaves and then they drink the tea and then lay down and go to sleep. And then the idea is it's supposed to give you very, very intense dreams where you can you can speak to the, the great spirit in your dreams and it actually does have kind of a suggestive sort of component to it. Um, I, I, I got a hold of some of the, you know, this is, this is kind of interesting because um, most of the time, whenever people are suffering from insomnia problem, I had for quite a while, I no longer suffer from it. I know now figure it if it's, it's a feature and I take advantage of it. But back to the time, I was like, this is kind of a problem. What do you do about insomnia? Uh, Valerian root was was you know typically the thing that you would get for the natural remedy. Here, have some valerian root and, and go listen to some 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 calming ocean sounds with with with, with the lights turned off. Maybe a mask on, you'll get some sleep. Um, but the problem wasn't necessarily getting to sleep. The problem is getting productive sleep. And productive sleep, we know from sleep studies, happens whenever you enter REM sleep. REM sleep is whenever you have rapid eye movement, but it's also associated with the dream state. What if I could induce the dream state rapidly and get you to the point where you can sleep quickly by, by, by getting you something to relax you, say valerian or passiflorian carnata, passion fruit juice, or uh, American water lily, um, sacred lotus too. But I, th I think more people do that for a recreation drink. I don't know. I'm just not familiar with it. But passion fruit juice is, is one, one is just, it's, <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to get in trouble for drinking passion fruit juice, but it will, oddly enough, relax you because that's, that's what, what, what its chemical action is. So passion fruit juice and the Kalea, which is incredibly bitter stuff put, put, put together. You get that down, lay down, go to sleep. You can be asleep within 15 to 20 minutes and you can be fully rested within an hour. Could that be useful? Yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> probably. But another thing that it could be used for is, is if you have a person that's having an issue that they they need to work through, um, but they are uh, resistant to hypnotherapy. There, there are you know hypnotherapy is is is, is sometimes useful. It's, 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 of limited use, it's not the magical cure all that some people think it is, but it does have a certain amount of limited use. But people have to be receptive to be put into that state. Having a, uh, a medication that helps you get into that state whenever you're uh, inherently distrustful and not allowing yourself to relax enough that you can enter into a state of hypnosis, therapeutic hypnosis might help as well. So there's, there's, there's some, some, some uses for it. And of course there's an indication that, that tribal shaman have indeed used it that way, giving the, 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 uh, the, the, the hypnotic or the, 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 the hallucinogenic to the, the subject that is in need of the healing and then going through the rituals, the ceremonies and everything else 
to get that altered state of consciousness where they can get at whatever the problem is that's going on here that's causing the discomfort and then working through that. So there are there are there are definite positive uses for it uh, that 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 uh, should not be discarded, even though yeah people do use drugs to get high and escape their problems too, which is of course the reason why you have to have uh, people out there in society that know how to use them appropriately and will teach people how to use them appropriately. Which is not me. <laughs> I'm not an herbalist. I, I have I have an interest, but it's not my it's not my main focus. All right. Live on what you grow has a cool biochar collection. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. That was the one that had the had the uh, the can thing where you where you slip the cans together and toss them in the in the uh, in the fireplace. That was pretty cool. Um, there's another technique that I saw with um, Sean and Edible Acres use the the restaurant stainless steel pans with the lids, and you just pile wood chips or whatever else is that you want to want to turn it in charcoal in there, put the lid on it. And once you've got your coal bed going in your, in your, in your fireplace, you put that in there. And I'm presuming you're probably going to want to have tongs or something to grab it because it's going to come out hot. And about maybe two or three hours later, you come in there, pull it out, set it aside, let it cool. You take your next one, you put it in and it, it heats it up until it produces the flammable vapors. They come up underneath the lid, they ignite, they burn, they generate heat for you. And then, and then you, you've got you've got charcoal left over, so you could be making biochar that way. This fireplace I've got does not really have a wide enough door for me to to, to do the, uh, the the restaurant pan trick, but I might be able to get away with with cans, I suppose. Ultimately, I really want to get a uh, a permanent biochar biochar gasifier uh, that I will use as a furnace instead. That's going to require maybe a little tinkering on my part. I've got an idea about how I want to put it together. Because I, okay. Basically, what I want to do is build a retort with multiple, uh, multiple bins. So you can pull a bin out, empty it. Well, pull a bin out, replace it with a new one because you're going you're to be uh, losing pressure while that thing's out. Put the new bin in. The bin has your has your your, your wood to, to turn into into charcoal in it. It gets heated by a burner on the underside, produces the flammable vapors, which come to a port at the top, quick disconnect up here at the top, that runs it to a manifold. The manifold receives these lines from all, I, I presume maybe three hoppers around the center of your of your burner, so you can change them out. You can have one going, and then you pull out another one swap it out for a fresh one. You can continuously run, run charcoal over this. Big disconnect connects to the manifold. Manifold takes that those, those, those vapors and diverts them back down to the burner on the underside where they burn and heat the the bins with your charcoal with, 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 the, with the, the biomass that you want to turn into charcoal. So it, it's making its own fuel to create the charcoal. Meanwhile, it's generating heat. Well, if you wanted to warm your house, okay, may as well make charcoal. I'm going to make charcoal and warm my house at the same time. <laughs> so that, that was the that was kind of the idea there. Um, I'm not precisely sure exactly how it will all work. I'm probably going to have to have a, a, a separate exhaust system. Yeah. I haven't even got down to the to 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 the napkin drawing of how how this thing is going to be constructed yet. It's just thinking about how I want it to go together. But being able to make your make your charcoal and heat your house at the same time, that's a win win. <laughs> John has 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 somehow received a blue wrench. Hang on a second here. Can I do anything about your blue wrench, John? Let me see here. Uh... 
There we go. Oh, I wasn't looking at live chat. It's a good thing I, I it's a good thing I thought ahead and I had uh I had uh chat open in, in YouTube. There you go, John. I removed your wrench. Are you happy now? <laughs> Don't have to do anything with the blue wrench. Uh it's it's just it's just like uh it's just like whenever you're you're, you're watching normally, only only instead of Instead of being able to block block annoying people so that you don't see them, you can block annoying people so that nobody sees them. It's kind of like that. All right. Or put them in timeout, which is better. It's like, hey, behave. I'm like, okay. And if they don't go okay, then you go, okay, all right, fine. You, you, you're, you're, you're incorrigible. We can't help you. Um, oh, yeah. Probably, probably drugs are the... They are more invasive than than what they were. It used to be liquor. Now we add more chemicals to the mix, um, and, and 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 weirder chemicals too. And this this entire war on drugs thing has has had people seeking different ways to to get that that feeling different and the weird things, weird 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 things. I mean, alcohol is not great. It really isn't. It dries you out. It's it's, it's bad for your liver. Um, just about all drugs, whenever you, you overindulge, are bad for you. Sugar. Hi. <laughs> Addict for life. Addict for life. These these uh. See how much sugar have I have I been ingesting? I, I ate an entire orange just here, and then I've got banana chips. Sugar. Nothing but sugar. I'm hooked. I'm hooked. Can't help it. Mm -hmm. John, this is actually my front yard. <laughs> it is a green screen, but it's a green screen from uh, from my front yard this past summer. Those are the uh, the can the, those big 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 plants there are the Canna indica papuria. They get up to nine foot tall. Hummingbirds love them. They make massive, massive clusters of, of, of rhizomes. Really big ones. I mean, you just about, eh, that big around. Tastes like a potato. Grows in times and places when potatoes won't. Um, if you live north of, of, of the 7A or south of 7A, if you're in the southern hemisphere, growing potatoes is not a problem. If you live in New Mexico, growing, is, growing, growing potatoes is not a problem because you can do it in the winter. Nice, long, cool growing seasons, what potatoes love. Here in Oklahoma, yeah, some years, yes, and some years, no. So <laughs> it's like when I was a kid, we could grow we could grow um, the, the Idaho russets. And that that's, takes like a whole total 120 days altogether, 100, maybe 110 days altogether, plus the, 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 the early part of the season that they're not even counting whenever it's just getting itself established. They don't even count that part. It's like once the, once you've got true, true leaves up and, and it's going, then it's like 110 to 120 days, plus another like two or three weeks to get it established. So it really comes up to be 130. We have enough, enough frost free days to make it. That's not the problem. And the problem is... Whenever spring arrives, at least right now, May will hit, and before the end of May, because we'll, we'll, we'll have we'll have maybe a, another freezing event, possibly even tonight. We could have frost tonight. I don't know. It might happen. Um, Easter usually we're done with frost. Um, we seem to have an early spring this year for some things. Tomatoes, not so much. Uh, keep those inside until after easter <laughs> because, because it, the, the, we're probably still going to get another frost but so easter last frost okay now your potatoes can start growing you can get them out earlier but you got to protect them from the frost otherwise they're they're done for but that gives us from what is it oh my goodness what is that the 31st, the, the very end of March. Yeah. So about 30 days, no, 60 days till the end of May. So I'd have to find a potato that can finish up in 60 days. Because if you can't finish up in 60 days, that's whenever you get 
temperatures over 85 degrees, 90 degrees, soil heats up and the potatoes don't want to grow anymore. Yay. <laughs> but when I was a kid, we could get those, 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 uh, those Idaho russets to grow. We had a little bit longer cool season. A little bit longer cool season. Now, we do sometimes have a little bit longer cool season, but it's in the fall, and there's always that chance of, of a hard freeze somewhere in the middle of it. So, um, kind of hit and miss for potatoes. But cannas? Nope. During, 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 during the hot, warm days, they don't really care. As long as they've got water, they don't care about shade. They just, they just want heat and water. Heat and water, heat and water, heat and water. We got 200 days frost-free. And, and and 40 inches of rain. So heat and water, heat and water. Those things grow like gangbusters. Nice big roots. Starchy. Hmm. <laughs> the Walking Dead. Maybe. Yeah. Already. <laughs> they look like it. See. I am way behind on, on chat, aren't I? No, I'm not. Okay, we're, we're, we're fairly close to the end here. All right. Vicky's saying, not that long ago, making cloth was a labor-intensive process and clothing was expensive. Yeah, you're not kidding. It wasn't that long ago. And really, um, I'm not great at, clo uh, at clothing making. I, I've, I've tried my hand. I mean, I I can knit. I can knit. I I know how to operate a loom. Um, I'm not great with a spindle, and uh, I'm iffy with a spinning wheel. Yeah, I'm better at weaving baskets than I'm weaving cloth. Uh, but but, um, but I, I I know I know how to find the fibers. <laughs> I can tan hides. Does that help? Would you like to wear some buckskin clothing? Yeah, fortunately, there's a lot of it out there. And and, and thank goodness for the people that, that keep the the uh, the craft of making cloth and clothing alive, because that's uh, may come a day when we need it. That's what I say. And spice with sea can be used as a spice. I know, and I want to get one. I just haven't got around to it yet. Oh, did they give you gravy, John? Do you have to purchase a copy of The Catcher in the Rye in order to feel normal? Mm. <laughs> I know. I, 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 get, I get mushrooms. I get lots of mushrooms. I don't always know what in the world I got. So I don't always eat the mushrooms I get. <laughs> if it's something that I if it's something that I deliberately inoculated and I know what I'm looking for, then I feel a lot more comfortable. I just want to show you guys this. This is it's dried out. Hang on, let me let me get this it's close to the camera so you can see it. You see all that? You see all those all those little white streaks? This chunk here, I pulled it out of the walkway. This is this is uh, a chunk of wood chips from, from, from one of my walkways after one year. You notice they're all welded together. And that's because the, the mushrooms, the native mushroom population, whatever it is, like I said, I don't know what I'm getting. It's, I, all I know is they break down the wood chips and they make soil, so I'm happy. They've infiltrated this. And they welded it together into a block. And now this thing is going to be held to absorb so many much more times its own weight and water. And hold it there and keep it in the soil. I need to go return it back where it came from because it's, it's dried out now. And so it needs to go back. It needs to go back where it came from. Oh, my goodness. I just noticed there's a, there's a wormhole right there on it where one of the earthworms was working its way through it. So they actually treat it as if it was the uh, the, the, the the litter that you would find on a natural forest floor. The, the, the night crawlers go, oh, it's 
a forest floor. We're going to work with it like it's a forest floor. And it's great. It's great. Well, let me see here. Vicky's got a low key brag here. Um, let's see, Vicky, how far away from uh, how far away from Fayetteville are you? Are you south of Fayetteville or north of Fayetteville? Probably north of Fayetteville, right? Close to the Bull Shoals. I was looking at a, at, a, at a YouTube channel earlier today for, for, for a guy that was that, that mentioned uh, the the name of a geographical feature near his home. I was like, "Oh, I thought you were in Oklahoma. You're over in Arkansas." <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, that's 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 over there on that side of the Ozarks. But but the you know the tree line looks an awful lot like a lot of places over here on this side. It's, you know, same old scrub oaks. Um, same old karst landscape. It's 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 uncanny. It's uncanny. On 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 a gray day, if you couldn't tell which direction the sun was coming and what time time of day it was, you wouldn't know which side of the mountains you were on. Which is kind of cool. Like and 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 the, the spot where this guy is, if you draw a line just due east from 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 us, that's that's where he's at. You go through go through Tahlequah, which is I, I spent a lot of time there when I was a kid, and and then that on that side of the Ozarks. But he's on the other side of the Ozark. Hmm. Well, <laughs> hey, um, automation is great if you can do it. Automation is great if you can do it because uh, pumping water by hand is no fun. It's no fun. It's no fun at all. You can pull out the Snoop Dogg and also the Corona. Uh, I haven't had I haven't had a Corona in a while. Back um, what was it, twenty twenty or so? Uh, Mary and I had a had a date in her truck. She brought her truck home and parked in the in the driveway, and I got a a twelve pack of Corona. La Familiar, which is kind of like a Budweiser, but made in Mexico. It actually tastes better than Budweiser. Now I don't drink any of them, because I quit drinking beer. Quit drinking beer because it goes right here. And you can't have hard, flat abs if you drink beer, unfortunately. They don't go well together. All right. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't want to go outside and, and, and work in the garden, then the garden doesn't get worked on. If the garden doesn't get worked on, the garden gets neglected. The garden gets neglected. Things die off. Things die off then. Yeah. Right. So you, you got to figure out a way to design it. So you want to go there. Um, if, it's, if if the thing is a chore, you don't want to do it. We got to do a lot of rainwater catchment here in the future. I think I can probably swing some of that in between the, the carport and the uh, garage job. Maybe. Possibly. I think. Oh, cool. Da -da -da. As long as the pumps stay, keep up. Yeah. <laughs> Take it easy, John. I got to get, get to bed here pretty soon myself. <clears throat> 
Tell you what, um, yeah, Glenn's Halloween program, whenever, whenever, whenever he reads Poe, he does great dramatic readings. It's fun. It's like, that's, you know, it, it reminds me of the, of the good old days of radio. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm almost that old. <laughs> they would have have shows, and you didn't have TV. You would just have the radio and the sound, and you, you, you'd sit there, and you'd tune in to the show and the radio, and you'd, you'd lean back, and it'd be dark because it's, it's after dark. And you don't want to waste the electricity, <laughs> so you just got the radio going. You're listening in, and, and, and there's somebody who's who's reading a story, doing dramatic reading, or you maybe have multiple people doing doing a radio play. And 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 I thought those were those were just the coolest thing. And so I do one of those every year, it's where 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 I take a Halloween story, I write a story, and then then do a little dramatic reading of it. Started a couple of years ago, and 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 I had a lot of fun doing it. So. We'll probably keep on doing it. I just take whatever weird, bizarre thing the garden throws at me over the course of the of the year, and use it as an inspiration for writing a, a, a weird and uncanny story. And that's that's what we go with. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these particular ones, they're they 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 were they were supposed to be seedless. Um, the one that ultimately I wind up getting is going to have all kinds of seeds in it. <laughs> Ooh, you just got the twenty dollars corn deal. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, you get it'll, it'll be at least four hundred kernels, which means you'll be able to plant a whole field. Well, I mean enough that you can keep the whole genome. Because it used to be, it was like, here, you can get one pack of 100 for, for five bucks. Okay, that's enough that you can plant it and go, okay, well, some of it turned out okay. Eh, eh. I don't know if I want to grow it anymore. I only, only got it this many. I can't reproduce it. So eh, go ahead and get the full four, and then you can you can grow it all, and then you can you can see what, what you want to do with it. Yeah, yeah. Every ear is, this, it is the most genetically diverse. Uh, genome of ZMAs that we can find. It really is. And that's the way it comes. It, it hasn't been it hasn't been divided up into little tiny little tiny separate cultivars and varieties yet. That's what is in all the seed companies out there is all the little cultivars and varieties. Well you don't have to get it from them. You can you can breed your own if you have a more complete genome to start with. That's what, of course, what I sell. All right. <laughs> Never did pot once in my life. That's now that it's legal. I'm too old to care. What? It's legal? Uh, I believe the feds still have it outlawed. I think. Huh? I think. I think. I didn't inhale. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. It's also, yeah, I, I, I told you, Sassgrass, he, uh, he's, he's experimented with, with Kalea, too. Smart people watch this channel. Smart people. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm smart people. I'm just saying the smart people watch me for some reason. <laughs> An entertaining goofball. Question: Here we go. Best method for growing watercress and what pH is recommended? And go. Running water, and uh, probably closer to a, a, a seven, maybe seven five, because it likes growing over um, over limestone parrot rock. But definitely what moving water it's, it's hard to keep in, in a static system it'll keep for a while but uh but ultimately it really really benefits from having one having moving water all right Gotta make sure the john sue by rock gets enough water also you have to yeah have to have solar pump for that getting water out to your out to your garden is is is, is a is the the number one most important thing you can possibly do. Um, so yeah, whenever you're, whenever you're doing your, your garden construction, 
be thinking about how you get the water to it. Because if your method of getting water to it is you have to carry buckets out there and it's going to be hundreds of yards, yeah, your, your garden's not going to do good because you're not going to carry those buckets. <laughs> Just not. <clears throat> There's, actually, there is one way. There is one way you can you, you you can do it, and that is you have livestock spread throughout the uh, throughout the garden, and taking the water to the livestock and emptying the out, the old buckets is the way you clean out their water and you water and fertilize at the same time because you're raising ducks. That's about the only way you can do it. And then yeah, then carrying the water out to them is not that big of a big of a deal. It's still easier to use a hose. A lot easier to use those. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, that one. All right. Oh, yeah. When are you doing charcoal? <laughs> yeah, it gets cooking. Buy a chart, easy and cheap method, farming life, Australia. There you Uh, Billy, Billy's asking about so seven, seven up to eight point five. Try not to go up to eight point five if you can help it. Eight point five is mighty alkaline. That's like eesh. you might want to be working on sweetening the soil up a little bit at that point because because okay so you go if you're at seven five you can get to eight five and still be kind of okay but you don't want to go beyond there you really don't. Because then you start up taking some some heavy minerals, and then on the opposite side, six five is about as low as you want to go, unless you're specifically trying to grow things like blueberries, and then you can go down to like five five and still be okay. But everything else is not going to like it at five five. So most of your veggie, veggies are going to be six five to seven five, somewhere in that range, and close to seven is right on for most things. Most things. A lot of your fruits like a little bit more alkaline, and then a lot of your your starchy root veg like it a little bit more. I'm sorry reverse that a lot of your fruits like it a little bit more acidic and then your root veg like a little more alkaline there we go that's, that's, that's what i was trying to say right. well i mean yeah she's an acquired taste oh you're not talking about my ex-wife <laughs> do east and north okay east oh you're east of Fayetteville okay you're 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 further east than I thought you were then hey look who showed up at 957 that was a uh... Seven minutes ago, Green Greggs, War of the Worlds, War of the Gourds. Yeah, we may have War of the Gourds this year. Uh, I'm only planning on growing two seminal pumpkin vines in the garden because they take over. Um, I went out, I went out to uh, to the little green belt out there, and I, I just took a bunch of the old ones that were that were riding away and just chunked them into the into into the into the tree line. We'll see if any of those happen to germinate and grow, and if they do, and we have we have pumpkins growing in the woods, then I'll consider that to be a minor win. So there are some people that think that the, the vine borer moth was, was put here by the devil. That's right. It is the enemy, the evil adversary, the devil himself put the vine borer moth on this planet to vex us. 
And of course, if you live in the south, you're familiar with vine borer moth. If you live further north, then you can grow these great big old Hubbard squash and you know, vine borer. What's that? I don't understand. We have these massive winter squash. Look, aren't they delicious? And they're they're perfectly fine. You try to grow something like that in the south, and the vine borers go, <coughs> and your squash dies immediately. You know, like, okay, that was that was fun. Um, but I have a difference of opinion. My, I, I thought about this for a while, and I realized that there are certain there are certain members of, of the Kirkabucha family that will grow to just choke everything in the world, seminal fungus, for example, if they are not checked. If something does not slow them down, I mean, at least slow them down. We're, we're not even trying to kill them off. We're just trying to slow them down a little bit, like put the brakes on them here. Okay, slow down, buddy. If something doesn't slow them down, then they'll choke out everything in the world. They'll just grow up over every tiny little sapling, over over everything, grab it and just drag it down, break it. I mean, I lost limbs off of uh, the plum tree and the jujube trees and the the dessert plum. All the, the those four little trees were on the on, on the inner ring of the garden in the backyard. Lost limbs to seminal pumpkins climbing on them. So. Vigorous vine. If something does not slow it down, it would it would it would absolutely destroy everything. So, a loving and beneficent beneficent creator put the vine borer on this planet to stop the squashes from killing everything else. Yeah, yeah we just are looking at our little tiny corner of the garden, going, "But why does it have to eat my squash?" Well, it's trying to stop them all from taking over. That's his job. That's his job. Let me see. You guys are talking about watching the eclipse from the porch. Well, I'm glad I'm not totally dependent upon solar power. Yeah. <laughs> I'm more of a little devil. <laughs> yeah. Um, Seminole Pumpkin manages to, 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 to go, oh, vine borers. Yeah, I, I, I don't care. And then pr proceeds to make a, a, a vine about yay big around that two or three borers are in, and it just goes nuts and, and takes over the yard. Um, so only two of them in the yard this year, and I moved them further back. So hopefully they won't destroy everything, but we'll get plenty of pumpkins. We got a few too many pumpkins, more more than I needed. I mean, if if, if I was going to be living off of just what I grew, I would probably want maybe two pumpkin vines for every three people. There you go. Two pumpkin vines for three people is just fine. It they make a lot of pumpkins. Oh, well, I guess it also depends. Might up it to one per person if uh, if if you got people that are going to be eating them green because you can eat them green like a summer squash. We're talking about seminal pumpkin here. So curcubita machata, really really tough 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 pumpkin. You can eat them like 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 a you can eat them like a like a summer squash whenever they're still green. You cut them up and put them in your salad, or you can or you can stir fry them. You can you can bread them and fry them, batter them and fry them. I, breaded and fried was really good actually i really enjoyed the breaded and fried ones um but you can eat them all different ways and then of course you can keep them like a like a butternut squash or a pumpkin and uh and cook them in the winter and one of my favorite recipes so far for cooking up a seminal pumpkin pardon me i've got an eyelash in my eye one of my favorite favorite recipes so far has been to take it up cube it get 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 the, get the rind off put it in in the in the pot with a little bit of milk and then heat it up and, and and mash it, add in diced ham, and then simmer that a little bit extra garlic and onions and and, 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 and herbs, black pepper, salt. And it's just oh, fills you up, right? It's so good, so yummy. It's got all your vitamins and minerals, and it's really hearty. Stick to your rib stuff. Oh yeah, nice to see Greg at a decent hour, hour, hour of the day. It's it's past my bedtime right now. As a matter of fact, I should probably be getting off here so that Greg can get on, right? <laughs> right, right, right. That's let's 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 do that. Greg, were you planning on going on here in a minute? 
Aww. Sleeping at the dot. Anyway, thank you very much for joining us. I, I'm almost two hours here. For some reason, I kept, kept on going. For those that joined us late, I just wanted to thank you all for watching. For, for, for It's been, I think, four years since I started making, making video content, about three years since we got monetized. And just this past week, we hit that point where that one oddball video that was getting all the views, it was getting all the traffic, well, it wasn't getting all, we got half the views and about half the traffic, all of that. That got to the point where now it's moved down in importance and now it's it's the other stuff that we do. It's more of the regular content that we do that uh, that's getting the views. And that either means that uh, that viewership is getting ready to drop off and we're going to stop at around 16, maybe 17,000 subscribers and that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye. Or thank you for watching and continue watching because this is the kind of stuff that we're going to keep on making. So hopefully that's the story and, and we'll go, we'll go ahead with that. Oh, it's got too much work to do before you can go live. All right. Well, I need to get to bed because it is past my bedtime. My eyes are trying to close up on me here and I need to let the cat out of the room before she does something horrible. <laughs> I had to I had to lock one of the cats in the room. She's just back from the vet. Her stitches are, are still in. She's got another two weeks before we can let her go run free. And of course, the all the other kitties are 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 secured at the moment on the porch because got the porch screened in. So um I don't have to worry about the screen getting pulled down by over your kitties. <laughs> but now I gotta let the cats out and I've gotta go to bed because we've got lots and lots of work to do tomorrow. Uh, guys, keep your eyes open for uh, our, our our video coming out here on Saturday, entitled "Why I Why I Still Don't Use Alfalfa Pellets in the Garden." Uh, for those of you who are who are channel members, of course, you guys have already already seen that it released earlier today for you. Everybody else, wait till Saturday. That's when it comes out. Uh, as always, guys, thank you for watching and. Get out there and get growing. As I always say, that's all I've got for you. Good night, everybody. I'm going to bed. <laughs>